Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study of the Refuge Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, 3750 Washington Street in the city of Sanford, Florida. Pastor Elder Joe Brooks, and I have the pleasure of serving as the diocese bishop. We're not in person in the building on today, but we're teaching from our home. And we're in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 48. And this is uh, the concluding lesson of the 48th chapter. We've taught a previous lesson on that. Our Bible reading for today uh, was Jeremiah 47 through the conclusion of the book of Jeremiah, chapter 52. And so let's journey right into the word of the living God. The horn of Moab is cut off. Now, this is the part of the reading of the Bible that can somehow be not as exciting because there are a lot of issues and detailed context that's brought to us that we're not very familiar with. But you need to realize that we teach the Bible verse by verse, and all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, properly for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, the woman too, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So let's just look into the word of God and see what he says for us tonight. We're picking it up in verse number 25. The horn of Moab is cut off. And his arm is broken, saith the Lord. Remember, Moab is a Gentile city or state. According to Genesis chapter 19, verse 30, and that should be 38, Moab was one, uh, the name of Lot's eldest daughter's son that she had from committing incest with her father. Lord help us. The horn of Moab is cut off. He was the founder of the Moabites. They had an immoral beginning and their morals were no better at the time of this prophecy. The horn throughout the Bible symbolizes strength. This is saying their strength is gone. The arm is an instrument of ability to do the things that are necessary. The horn of Moab is cut off. The Lord says his arm is broken and he can no more do these tasks. Verse number 26, and make ye him drunken for he hath magnified himself against the Lord. Moab also will wallow in his vomit and he also shall be in derision. One of the beauties of understanding God is that God not only deals with his people, but he deals with all people. And the children of Israel are going through some horrible um, things at this time, but yet God is not going to excuse the behavior of those that don't serve him. Just like Jesus died for the whole world, he's going to judge the whole world. And there are some countries, there are some nations, there are some people that God is going to judge harshly because of how they treated his children. Now think about this. The Moabites started out as a result of a Lot's oldest daughter des desiring to sleep with her father because she felt like God's judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah had taken away her heritage. Her husband is gone. They won't be able to produce. So I'm going to get my father drunk. Yeah, this is in the Bible, y'all. And sleep with him so we can have a child. Now, if you look at it from just a general standpoint, it looked like her motives were proper. She was trying to do what God had assigned, be fruitful and multiply. But her method that's what the horn here. You really realize that God had only let you get get away, but for so long, her method was wrong. And these Moabites grew into a strong people, people who would control and even dominate the children of God at times. 
but you need to know God is going to hold you accountable. So he's saying to the Moabites, y'all started out wrong, but now it's time to receive the consequences of your immoral behavior. We see that even throughout the world, and I won't spend a lot more time on that, but when you see certain countries that perpetually are in certain states, no matter how they change their leadership, no matter how much money you give to them, and they're still in that same perpetual state year after year after year, that's the judgment of God. God judges, yes, his children first. Judgment begins at the house of God. But those who are not his do not escape his judgment. This is just showing the extent of the despair throughout Moab. He is drunk and wallowing in the vomit because he cannot face the reality surrounding him. I think y'all see where it's going. Let's go to verse number 27. For was not Israel a derision unto thee? Was he found among these? For since thou spakest of him, thou skippest for joy. Oh God, help us on tonight. Derision means a pond to swim in. In this scripture, they had spoken disrespectfully of Israel. They were happy over Israel's problems. Now they have problems of their own. That's why you don't have to fight your battle. You don't have to defend your honor. God fights your battle. That's why he puts out covenant between you and others. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. You're safe in the arms of Jesus. Why? Because the horn of Moab is cut off. The horn of Moab. Lot's daughter would have never been in that situation. I'm just trying to put it together for you. Had not Abram taken Lot with him. When the Lord told Abram, get out from amongst thy country and thy kindred. You see, there's something that you need to understand. Sin builds. And that's why you got to learn to lay aside every sin and the weight that does so easily beset you. And when you find sin, no matter how long, it has been a part of your family's life. You got to say proverbially, the buck stops with me. You have to eradicate it. Because I'm going to tell you, it has consequences. The horn of Moab is cut off. If God is going to judge the world, don't you know he's going to judge the people of God? Verse number 28. Oh, ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities and dwell in the rock and be like the dove that maketh her nest in the side of the hole's mouth. Verse 29, we have heard of the pride of Moab. He's exceeding proud. His loftiness and his arrogancy and his pride and the haughtiness of his heart. All this is just saying that Moab would not be a safe place to be. The dove hides her little ones to keep them safe. Reminds me of Paul's lesson to the church at Thessalonica. When they shall say peace and safety, oh, sudden destruction shall come upon them. See, pride cometh before a fall. All of this will fade away when the judgment of God falls upon Moab. The horn of Moab is cut off. It's wrong. And God has allowed it to live until this day. But you need to realize it's not going to be like this always. That's why I'm trying to encourage somebody. No matter how lucky you might feel, no matter how blessed you might feel, even though you're doing wrong, I want you to know the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Why? Because the horn of Moab 
is cut off. God will cut you. Your chance for redemption is time sensitive. So repent while you still have a chance. Get it right while God gives you an understanding. Because as you see, Moab, earlier we talked about vomiting on itself. Or saw Moab, drunkenness. Saw Moab, uh, wallowing in their, 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 their situation. Why? Because God is now judging them. Verse number 30, I know his wrath, said the Lord, but it shall not be so. He li his lies shall not so affect it. Verse 31, therefore will I howl for Moab, and I will cry out for all Moab. My heart shall mourn for the men of Kerheres. See, Moab will lie no more. They have been rendered helpless. All of Moab is destroyed. And the prophet Jeremiah cries out in anguish at this terrible destruction. I hope you understand what I'm saying. God will put a burden in your heart to even cry for those who don't even love God. Why? Because we have compassion. We have pity. It's not God's will that any man should perish, even the wicked. But it all should come for repentance. This country right now is very divided because of this entire election and the political nature of the election and this partisanism. Hallelujah. But I believe God is talking to some true prayer warriors to intercede on behalf of his people and even those who are not his people. Yeah, you can ask God to have mercy. You can ask God that his mercy will override his judgment. I'm glad somebody prayed for me, not according to my works, but because they were concerned about my life. My life was not pleasing with God. But somebody interceded and said, Lord, have mercy. Yes, the horn of Moab is cut off, but God is even used in Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, to howl and cry on their behalf. Mm. There's a prophetic utterance. Yes. David said, I cried to the Lord, and he heard my cry. Verse number 32, O vine of Sibma, I will weep for thee with the weeping of Jazir. Thy plants are gone over the sea. They reach even to the sea of Jazir. The spoiler is fallen upon thy summer fruits and upon thy vintage. The symbolism here reminds us that it's time sensitive. And joy and gladness is taken from the plentiful field and from the land of Moab. And I have caused wine to fail from the wine presses. None shall tread upon, just give me, shall tread with shouting. Their shouting shall be no shouting. The wonderful vineyards are all gone. Without the fruit of the vineyard, there can be no wine made. Sometimes wine, joy, and gladness are thought of as all a part of each other. Wine, perhaps, gives a false sense of joy and gladness. The horn of Moab is cut off. Just kind of give you my view on, amen, what the lesson is trying to share with us in a real practical way. Just in a few days, we traditionally would be celebrating a time of family coming together. Uh, we call it Thanksgiving when we remember how uh, those who man, developed this land and they had come from other places and they and with the natives that were already here wanted to thank God for the first harvest and uh, they uh, began to be thankful. It's a time of thanksgiving. Now, we are so commercial in this 
approach to Thanksgiving. Till we say we are celebrating Thanksgiving, but we thank everything and everybody else except for the one who is most deserving. Are you thankful tonight? The pandemic has now dealt with our method and has exposed our motives. But you know, you shouldn't allow the fact that we can't assemble as we've done in the past hinder us from assembling as God desired us to assemble. How does he desire us to assemble? With a heart full of thanksgiving. You can be a thousand miles from me and still be thankful. Oh, we can't celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, why can't we celebrate Thanksgiving? Celebrate. Give God the praise and the glory. Honor him. Not with the traditions. See, it's not about the turkey. It's not about the trimming. The horn of Moab is cut off. There's so many things that we did in the name of God was actually was blasphemous to God and God has taken it away from us to give us an opportunity not to be caught up in the wine. The wonderful vineyards are gone. There's no fruit in the yard. But are you thankful? Oh, I'm so thankful. Verse number 34 from the cry of Heshbon even unto Elia and even to Jahaz have they uttered their voice from Zor even to a horror name as an heifer of three years old for the water of Nimrim shall be desolate. Again, we see the extent of the widespread desolation. The cry of a heifer three years old is speaking of when she has her first calf. The cry of one of the city goes to another and so on. Misery. <laughs> Loves company. Oh, when the judgment of God begin to fall, there's no hiding place. The horn of Moab is cut off. Her arm is broken. Verse number 35, Moreover, I will cause to cease in Moab, saith the Lord, him that offereth in high places, and him that burneth incense to his gods. Now we see the reason for the widespread destruction is the fact that they are worshiping false gods. Burning incense to the false god was an abomination to God. The Lord stopped them himself. You need to know God is in this. God is doing this. You're going to be like Samson, shake yourself as you did at others and think that you still have the strength. No, nope. it's cut off Moab. Your arm is broken. Verse number 36, therefore my heart shall sound for Moab like pipes. And my heart shall sound like pipes for the men of Kerheres. Because the riches that has gotten are perished. <laughs> it's over. These pipes were used at funerals. This gives us off a very mournful sound. Jeremiah mourns even though he knows God's judgment is just wailing and weeping and crying because of my compassion, my sympathy, and my empathy for you. But I know you're getting just what you deserve. I'm just asking God, Lord, have mercy. Verse number 37, for every head shall be bald and every beard clipped upon all the hands shall be the cuttings and upon the loins, sackcloth. Verse 38, there should be a lamentation. Generally upon all the housetops of Moab and in the streets thereof. For I have broken Moab like a vessel wherein is no pleasure, saith the, the Lord did this. He broke Moab. He is allowing destruction to come. They worship in false gods. They started out wrong. They didn't get it right. 
let me want to just kind of interject here. We're talking about corporate or collective judgment upon the nation, upon the people, not the individuals. Because I know the Bible students who understand that Ruth was a Moabitess. And when God allowed famine to be in the land of promise so that the people of God could get to where Ruth is. See, if your heart is right, if you have a desire, even though judgment is on your nation, oh, I'm talking to the believer in America, because this nation is under judgment. This world is under judgment. But it don't have to be the same consequences for you. See, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. God will judge the nation, but yet individually deliver you. Yeah, God got a Boaz to get you out. That's why we got to learn to trust in him. Jeremiah is lamenting. He's crying out. He's pleading to God. All of these are just outward signs of mourning. These housetops are where they burn their incense to the false god, so it would be correct for them to be places of mourning now. Verse number 39, they shall howl, saying, How is it broken down? How have Moab turned the back with shame? So shall Moab be in a, a derision and a dismay to all of them about him. Not only was Moab defeated, but they were humili humiliated, excuse me, as well. They could not understand how this could happen to such a strong a land. Oh, I hope you hear America. I know you are riding high with your nationalism. You, 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 you are sitting pretty. You at the top. But I'm telling you, the principles that established this nation that we have abandoned come with heavy judgment consequences. I pray that we turn as a nation. And even though I'm in this nation, I realize that heaven and earth is going to pass away as an individual. I'm doing what Peter told him on the day of Pentecost. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Oh, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. The horn of Moab is cut off, but I'm resting in the arm of the one who's so powerful. His arm is not too sharp that it cannot reach me. He's a savior. Yeah, he put his arms all around me. I'm glad I'm saved. Verse number 40, for thus saith the Lord, behold, he shall fly as an eagle. And shall spread his wings over Moab. This is speaking of the leader uh, of their oppressor, possibly Nebuchadnezzar, who swoops down like an eagle and takes his play. Prey, excuse me. Carrioth is taken, and the strongholds are surprised, and the mighty men's hearts in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pains. And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people because he had magnified himself against the Lord. This is amazing when you study the word of God and you compare it to the historical record. The eldest daughter slept with her father and the product was the Moabites. There is no historical record of the Moabites still living today. But the youngest daughter did the same thing and produced a child called Ammon. And the Ammonites are still in the earth today. Matter of fact, you can go to Tehran and the 
uh, the key city that's there, the capital city, is Ammon, named after their father. So why would God judge one and not another for the same act? Because he's a sovereign God, and he does whatever he wants to do. And you have to allow him to reign in your life. So don't measure your reaction or action by someone else's judgment. That's why you need to spend time saying, Lord, it's me. It's me. The horn of Moab is cut off. Quit pointing your finger at others and realize that God is giving you an example so you can get yourself together. There go I, but for the grace of God. When I see people who are stuck in conditions, I don't look at them with no condemnation. Because there's therefore no condemnation. <laughs> if you're in Christ Jesus, you're not looking down upon that person. You're actually looking up to the cross. And you're saying to the Lord, Lord, help me be a blessing to even those who curse me. Yeah, we pray for those that despitefully use us. The horn of Moab is cut off, but I believe God has given us this lesson in the book of Jeremiah and this obscure lesson. Many people don't teach on this kind of stuff to remind us that Jeremiah's gift was to weep on behalf of others. See, he was chosen to be a prophet while he was yet in his mother's womb. Not a prophet only to Israel, but a prophet to the nations. I feel it in my spirit right now. I'm talking to someone who has a global anointing. You're limited because those around you don't understand you. But I come to speak over your life to let you know, lean not to yours or their understanding. But realize God has called you to be a world changer. Yeah, <laughs> you might be a Moabitess. But God is going to send Naomi. And through that covenant, God is going to allow Naomi's God to be your God. And where she lodged, that's where you, God is sending a word to deliver you right now. He sent a word to encourage your heart to let you know, yes, nationally, yes, corporately, everybody who's born in your household, could fail God, but God has raised you up. <laughs> and you need to thank him for it. God, I praise you. The group is going to be destroyed, but I shall live. This is speaking of the fear and pain that comes upon these men as a woman giving birth. Lucifer found out that you do not magnify yourself against the Lord. This is just punishment for such a horrendous sin. Verse 43, as we close out, fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, said the Lord. I keep using this analogy of the story of Ruth, Naomi, and Orpah. You remember? <laughs> Naomi had the impact on Orpah the same. And she told them once the famine, amen, was no longer in Israel, told Ruth and Orpah, say, y'all stay here. Go back to your people. And Orpah did. Remember I told you about Ammon and Moab? I don't know what it is, decision that God is giving you to make, but you got to make that Ruth type of decision. You have to make that decision that will put you in the place. See, we are translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Once you hit a unction of God, once you feel the urgency of God, once God speak to you, don't think that Moab is going to be your burying place. The horn of Moab is cut off. God wants you to come out from amongst them and be separate, saith the Lord. You can escape the pit. Oh, yes, you can. You can escape the destruction 
and come on over on the Lord's side. All of these things happen when the people are doomed. There's no escape. Unchecked sin brings this type of doom, whether you are Moab or anyone else. And all I'm trying to say, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. But you don't fall into sin overnight. It's a process till you get to sin. See, when you're drawn away or there's a, 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 a tugging on you or something that puts you away, it's your own lust. All this in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, whether it's what you see, what you feel, amen, or what you uh, trying to get from others, it'll draw you away from God. And see, that lust has to be conceived in order for it to bring forth sin. And sin has to be finished. That's what James said, in order for it to bring forth death. And I'm just trying to let you know before you die in your sin, because it's coming. There's an ultimate price you have to pay for death in sin. That's why Jesus died to take upon himself the sins of only the righteous. No, he died for the sins of the whole world. So he's already given you a way out, a way of escape. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I'm glad I'm saving. I'm trying to offer you that exit. Walk in the salvation that God has given unto you. You don't have to worry about the sin God has made and escape for you. But the problem is the majority of those who are born shall die in their sins. That's why you must be born again. See, there's a broad way there's a wide way, and that's the way of destruction. But the narrow path, <laughs> you find a few like you. Come on and walk therein. It's applicable to all of us. Verse number 44, he that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken into the snare. For I will bring upon it even upon Moab the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. I start to tag this tonight, the year of their visitation. Amen. But just call that the sub a topic. You got a time. You got a year. You got a, 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 an appointed time. That's what Hebrews 9, 27 says, appointed unto man wants to die. This is the appointment God got for you. That's why you got to get it right. And after death, then there is the judgment. Verse number 45. They that fled stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of the force, but a fire shall come forth out of Heshbon and a flame from the midst of Sihon and shall devour the corner of Moab and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones. In other words, things are going from bad to worse. Fire, destruction. You can't get away from God. You're going to pay for your sins. The year of their visitation speaks of their death. This judgment is of God and there's no escape. They may escape imprisonment, but if they do, the fire will destroy them. There's no, no escape in the wrath of God. Verse 46, woe be unto thee, O Moab. The people of Chemosh perisheth, for thy sons are taken captive, and thy daughters captive. And our final verse, verse 47. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days. Saith the Lord, thus far is the judgment of Moab. Symbolically, Moab, even though they are no longer in existence, Naturally, spiritually, you who are Moabites, get it right because judgment day is coming. 
the latter time is coming. It's coming. Judgment is coming. Oh, sinner man. Why not tonight? Come on to the Lord before it's a day and an hour too late. Some are killed and others are taken captive in the end time, the latter days. God will bring Moab back to its land. All right. Thank God for all those who have joined in with us. Those who are on the conference line, we're going to open up, give you an opportunity to ask your questions if there are any. We have a few questions um, that we have. Amen. For those who are watching us by Facebook Live, amen, we thank God for all of you, amen, supporting the ministry. Let's jump right into the lessons. Question number one, what does the horn symbolize in the Bible? I think that's pretty straightforward. Symbolizes strength. All right, question number two. Why are they drunk in verse 26? Anyone? Because he cannot face the reality surrounding him. Trying to drown out their sorrows. Question three. What does derision in verse 27 mean? It's mean a pond to swim in. Question number four, what has happened to the vineyards? Anyone? The wonderful vineyards are all gone. Without the fruit of the vineyard, there can be no wine made. God has just brought destruction. Question five, wine gives a false sense of what? And joy and gladness. Question six, what was the reason for the widespread destruction? Because they were worshiping false gods. Question seven, what are the pipes in verse 36 used for? I think everybody knows about that funeral home music. Yeah, these pipes were used at funerals. It gives us uh, of a very mournful sound. Question eight, where were the lamentations given? Yeah, upon the housetops and in the streets of Moab. Question nine, what are some of the outward signs of mourning? Bald head, clipped beard, hand cuts or cuts in the hand, and sackcloth on the loins. Who is a flying like an eagle in verse 40? leader of their oppressor, possibly Nebuchadnezzar. Question 11, blank found out you do not magnify yourself against the Lord. Yeah, that angel who fell from grace, Lucifer. Question number 12, what will happen to them if they escape imprisonment? Fire will destroy them. Then our final question, what are the latter days? And that's the end times. Amen. Just a brief lesson on today. Pray that it has been a blessing to you. We encourage you. Realize that it might look strong today, but judgment is coming. The horn of Moab is cut off. What is Moab? It is representative of those who try to do the right thing but they do it the wrong way. There's a philosophy that's taught in, in a church. And, and, and it's a damnable heresy, from my opinion. They tell people, it's not what you do, it's how you do it, because God know your heart. If you know you're doing wrong, if because you believe God in your heart, you think that God ain't going to hold you accountable for it. The horn of Moab is cut off. Get it right with God before today and an hour too late. We pray that you receive the lesson also in the way that it was 
intended to be delivered. It's our goal always to give you an understanding that God loves you and we love you too. As always, if you want to hand out the Bible study guide is available on our website, www.refugesanford.com. Any questions, comments, thoughts, reach out to us. We're here to serve. Our contact information is scrolling upon the screen. Now, next Thursday, God has blessed us. Amen. We're going to be in the city of Daytona Beach, 1063 Mason Avenue. We're going to be at the EBE Event Center, and we're going to be starting Bible study. We'll be even uh, reinitiating our mission work in the city of Daytona Beach. It's a city that I was reared in, and I have a special love for that city. So y'all pray for us. Amen. As we endeavor to do a greater work for God. So we're thankful to the Lord and God bless you. Good night.